My name is Average Joe, and I'm a proud geek with expertise in movies, superheroes, and animation. And my name is Dr. What, and I'm a total nerd, but you wouldn't know it if you met me. My expertise is in mathematics, history, of course medicine, and all things nerddom. Our mission is to bring nerd culture to the masses by putting it all under the microscope. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Bat Jar, Jar Podcast. Movies, TV, manga, comic books, or is that graphic novels, cartoons, groups, that's animation, Disney, Star Wars, Dragon Ball Z, Damn. Pokemon, and Digimon, Pow. and Mighty Morphin, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Pow. Yogi-Yo, and Nintendo, Cinematic Universe, Marvel, DC, Justice League, is Batman, Luther, Superman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Avengers, Iron Man, Captain Jaws, Loki, Spider-Man, and Hulk, and Logan, X-Men, Avengers, and the Galaxy, Guardians, Star Trek, Trick, Trick, Card, and Jane, Magic, Geeks, Capital, Rocket, Jordan, 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 and welcome to the Bat Jar Podcast, where we put nerd culture under the microscope. This week's episode is interesting in the fact that it's recorded far in advance of when it's going to be released, because a special guest, a good friend of the podcast, someone you hear on the show every week, albeit he's always saying the same thing, <laughs> the, the man who does the intro music for our podcast, our our good friend Cackles. Hey, how's it going? You're you're here in the Bachar studio. <laughs> I've made it back. Oh, I'm. It's so good to be back. Thanks for having me again. You first appeared on the podcast in episode. I think it was like number twenty five. Oh man, when we, we talked about Batman the animated series. The animated series. That was lots of fun, actually. Yeah. And we're now, I think, upwards of like episodes like one hundred and forty. Oh, so wow. So it's clearly been a while. Holy moly! Yeah. But your episode is one of the like most downloaded episodes of our show we've oh, really? ever had. So I don't know if you have just been going back and re-downloading it many times to boost your own <laughs> numbers. Like, uh, doing it again. Doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've, I've told a few people about it and I've said, I've been like, oh yeah, like I was on a podcast and this is the podcast. And so I think, well, and then my wife, actually, I just got, I, I just got married and she, she, was very excited, so she went and listened to it, I think, probably a couple times, too. <laughs> so. And, of course, you're the current uh, singer of our theme song. Yeah, that was really... So, and this, that was an idea I had, probably was around that, the time that we recorded, and I, I like, I, because we, we chatted about the Danny Elfman, like, Batman theme song, and, and you know, like, that, was, that's the Danny Elfman one, right? Where it's like this, yes. uh, the, do, do. Yep. I had found a version of it where it was the nineteen, the Danny Elfman version of the song mashed together with the nineteen sixties Batman version, and yeah, it was really cool. And um, I remember getting this idea. I was like, it would be really cool to do this, that as a theme song. So yeah, recorded it. Took some time, and it was. I thought it was pretty good. So. <laughs> 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 Yes, yeah, so well, we were very happy to get that email with that podcast introduction, and it brings me great joy to like hear it every week. So thanks, once yeah. again, we, we we give you thanks once in a while Aww. on the show, but thank you, Cackles, for bringing that to the the world of the Bat Jar. Yeah, no problem. I have to edit it a little bit because, <laughs> but I I still have to get an, an edited version out for. Dr. What and oh, who's the other guy? Ben the movie. Ben buff. the movie buff. <laughs> well, hopefully by the time this episode has come out, you've gotten yeah, that recording to exactly. us. Exactly. Yeah. So, so if, if you guys are the... still hearing the incomplete version of the podcast theme <laughs> you... when this episode goes out, ooh, that cackles is a uh, he's slipping, <laughs> slipping, sliding. Ooh, I'll just blame it on uh, newly married. <laughs> 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 so cackles every time a guest comes back to the show we always oh, yeah. ask two questions actually no sorry we oh. ask one question when they oh. come back okay <laughs> we ask them two questions and they come on for the first time oh yeah so what kind of nerdy or geeky things have you been up to since you were last on the show oh sh okay let me see i was let me see. Well, I got into recording. I recorded this thing. <laughs> that was kind of cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was really neat. I, I was really, uh, when I recorded this thing, I was like, that was lots of fun. And um, what other things have I been kind of getting into? I've actually been introducing my wife, I think, to uh, a lot of nerdy and geeky things, too. So I've been, she's been enjoying the, the wealth of, of things that I've been like, have you seen this movie? <laughs> have you read this comic? <laughs> and I tell her all about it, and she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> well, keep, her, keep it up and you know, encourage her to listen to The Batch Hour, because yeah. it exists partially to bring people who are 
not interested or not knowledgeable of nerd culture into mm-hmm. the world of nerd culture. So yeah. Okay, cool. And you are wearing a, a superhero t-shirt today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brought this specifically for today. Yeah. Where, where, how long have you had that shirt for? I've had it for oh, probably a couple of years. Yeah. I got it in a... the um, Loot crate? Yeah, a loot crate. But it was like a, 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 a knockoff loot crate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I got it in a loot crate and... <laughs> It was kind of cool, and it fit me well. And I was like, "Oh, hey, this is cool." So what it what it is? It's got three um, superhero symbols on it. It says "Live Fast," and they're all DC. So "Live Fast." So that's probably you can probably figure that out. That's uh, the Flash. Stay strong is Superman, and then be smart is of course the Batman. Oh, the Batman! Wow, the, the Batman. I'm 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 going uh, to the movie that's going to come out apparently. Eventually. Eventually, they say. I don't know. <laughs> I've yet to see it. <laughs> well, Cackles, it's good to have you here. And for this oh-so-special episode that exists outside of time because it's it's so far from when it comes out. We're, Just like the Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about something that is, is kind of topical slash something that is getting hits on YouTube right now. So I feel bad for YouTubers. They kind of have to always follow these trends and make content about stuff regardless if they want to or not. But with the release of Spider-Man Far From Home, the the topic has been brought up once again of who is the best Mm Spider-Man. And so I thought it'd be fun for your kind of special appearance today. We would go through and create the Batjar ranking of all of the actors who've played Spider-Man in the movies. Now, two years ago, this list would have been a lot smaller, but we've had lots of Spider-Man movies come out in the last couple of years (laughs) and a lot of different Spider-Men in those in those different movies. So a couple qualifiers here before we, we get started. First of all, we're only talking about Spider-Men that have appeared in the movies. So if it's appeared in a film somewhere in the world, whether that's here in North America or overseas, then it counts. Animated and live action are included, but we're not including any television portrayals or any versions of the character from the comics. And to be even more specific, we're only going to be talking about variations of Peter Parker. Now, the Spider-Verse movie showed us that oh, man. that you can be <laughs> Spider-Man without being Peter Parker. And, of course, through the many different stories in the comics that show different characters being Spider-Man in the multiverse, there are many different Spider-Men, but each different Spider-Person is a different character. And so to put Miles Morales or Gwen Stacy as Spider-Woman in the same list ranking as the one we're using for Peter Parker. Or even Venom too, right? Yeah, it's just not the same. You're, yep. It's apples and oranges. Yeah. You know, they're playing different characters, and while they might be like the same motif visually or maybe even some of the, the character beats, it's unfair to uh, lump them in with the rest here. Mm-hmm. So, Cackles, let's uh, give an honorary mention. Like, who would be your favorite movie Spider-Man that is not Peter Parker? We've had two different Venoms. Yeah. And then we had three alternate takes on Spider-Man that were into the Spider-Verse characters. So like Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Gwen, uh, who is the other one? Penny Parker. Penny Parker. Oh yeah, Penny Parker. Uh, and then there's two oh, Venoms. And then, and then Venoms. Oh right, Venom, yeah, from Spider-Man 3. And then Venom. Uh, Miles. I think Miles, I would say. Right, yeah, I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that? Well, okay, If for all the people out there that haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse yet, uh, you should see it. <laughs> so, it's, it's a really great movie. I just really enjoyed it. Like from a technical standpoint, like a movie making standpoint, it is just fantastically made, right? But it's also uh, a really great story, like kind of about about becoming a like Spider Man, right? For Miles, right? He's he's learning about himself and becoming greater i love it so earlier in the movie i can we spoil this yes we, in this movie oh. like at, this, at the point this episode comes out spider-verse will have been out for almost a year <laughs> yeah that's true that's true so guys cl- pause it now go watch the movie okay you're back good all right so <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna and there's the part in the movie where he's at the beginning and it was like the funeral of spider-man and peter parker's wife mary uh, jane mary jane yes <laughs> are you sure you're qualified to be ranking <laughs> know, right? holy moly what am i doing he so she's on the she's speaking to the crowd and she's like 
everyone is Spider-Man. And Miles is in the crowd and he's like, I'm Spider-Man? And there's a guy that whispers to him, not you specifically, right? <laughs> Which is, and they play it off as, as like funny and like you laugh. But then later in the movie, that's what Miles says again. He becomes Spider-Man and then he's like, yes, like you can become Spider-Man. So it's really cool. Like they flip it on his head. Anyway, that specifically made me enjoy that movie. I would say my favorite version of Spider-Man that's been in a movie that is not Peter Parker is Spider-Woman, the Gwen Stacy Spider-Woman who's in Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. As played by Haley Steinfeld. For many reasons. First of all, I love the look. I think it's a unique visual with like the ballet shoes and the hoodie and the and the way that the like there's like the eyes are kind of like spray paint pink almost, like they're like oh, yeah. kind of like faded in. So I think she has a great look. And I love the whole story of essentially like the roles reversed for her, wherein in classic Spider-Man comics, Gwen Stacy is killed and it serves as a motivation for Peter Parker. And in her story, it's the reverse. It's actually Peter who dies and she uh, is spurned on to be a hero because of him. The Spider-Verse movie doesn't get into this very much, but like the dynamic of her world where like her dad's a cop and she's a vigilante like that. That's very interesting. And even just the way that she is portrayed in Spider-Verse where she... Uh, it has been at it for a few years and she's still a teenager. And so she's able to connect with miles in a way that the other spider people don't seem to be able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really love the way she came off in that. And, you know, I've heard rumors of like there being like an all female spider verse movie. And considering how much I love the may Parker spider girl from the future. And I like this spider woman. I'd be totally on board with that. Oh yeah. Ooh, that'd be fun too. So having gotten the honorable mentions out of the way, <laughs> We can now start ranking the actual Peter Parkers. And to be clear again, this is any version of Peter Parker that's appeared in film. And we're not going to be evaluating the movies that they appeared in. This is purely based on their performances. This is based Mm -hmm. on how well did they portray and capture the spirit of Peter Parker as he is in the comics? How well did they capture the spirit of who Spider-Man is from the comics? And essentially, how well did they bring the source material to life while also making it unique? Because as we talked about when we did our best superhero movie performances, is that you can have a performance that is like a, just a great Oscar-worthy performance without being faithful to the comics at all. You can that can happen, and that's happened in some comic book films. So like that's an you can't deny the quality of that performance, which is why you often get like an A stamp for that. Whereas sometimes a, an actor can portray a character exactly as they are in the comics. But it might not be anything super amazing in terms of a performance. So they get saddled with a with a B stamp, meaning that, okay, yeah, like they are doing the character justice, but they don't deserve any awards for this. And then you have the C type, which is the rare case where it's actually both, where it's mm-hmm. like it's like yeah. the secret sauce of being faithful to the comics and to the spirit of the character while also just being uh, an awards worthy performance. And so we'll, as we'll see, like all from the rankings too, that's mixed, right? Like it's not perfectly but it works sometimes really well yeah and and the other thing too is like obviously like we're gonna be naming actors and Mm -hmm. specific versions of care of the peter parker character this is not necessarily like a criticism of those individual actors because especially with the animated ones and but even with the live action ones too there's so many factors that get put into these these portrayals like first of all you have the visual spider-man's very visual character so for me at least the way the actor looks and the way the costume looks impacts how i feel they portray the character. Mm, they yeah. didn't. They didn't make any of the decisions what the costume looked like or what their Peter Parker clothes looked like. They didn't have any real choice over what the words they said. That was the responsibility of the writers, and the way that they portrayed the character was inspired by whoever was directing them. So really, like when we're talking about these specific actors, we re- I recognize at least maybe you understand this too, Cackles, that it's not totally mm-hmm. that actor's responsibility if the performance if the portrayal of peter parker is good or bad Mm -hmm. yeah no and absolutely and and i think it's also it also has to include the director's vision and the writer's kind of understanding of the story behind it um there's a lot that goes into making spider-man the that close to his who he is in in in, um in our minds and in the collective imagination so we've done the classic batch our system where we basically both Cackles and I individually ranked all of the Spider-Men. And then just to get a, another source of information there, I went to a website called Total Nerd Ranker. <laughs> Never heard of it before, but it was the nope. top, it was the top oh. result on Google. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey. <laughs> so in classic batch our, fa- our fashion, 
we've taken total nerd rankers ranking our own personal rankings and put them all together and i'm gonna i want this to be a surprise for you so i'm gonna oh, turn the sheet away sorry from you. yes <laughs> so oh boy I can't um, wait. yeah so <laughs> it's it's like every other batch our ranking system we have it's like the higher your score is yeah. it means that the lower ranked you were right and right. so the idea here is like we're playing golf you want to have a low score there oh, okay. have been to date eight versions of peter parker yeah. in film yeah and so that means obviously the worst score you could get if you're ranked eighth place in by all three is 24 yeah. and the lowest score you could get if you're ranked first by everybody is three okay yes so are you ready for this cackles i'm ready let's do this okay all right coming in in eighth place <laughs> With 24 <laughs> points. I'll do a drum roll for everyone, so I'll just stop there. <laughs> with, with 24 points, which means that they're basically ranked the lowest by all metrics. Yeah. Okay. Is John Mulaney as oh, Peter Porker. Mr. Peter Porker. AKA At your Sp- service. <laughs> AKA Spider Ham <laughs> from 2018's Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. <laughs> My name is Peter Porker. And boy, does he ham it up in the movie. <laughs> so were you familiar with Spider-Ham before the movie came out, before you saw the trailers? Did you know it was a thing from the comics? I think I may have heard of it, but um, yeah, I've never seen it, actually. I, I, there might have been something there. I had read before seeing the movie or seeing the trailers for it, um, the comic uh, Spider-Verse in uh is it even called into yeah. the Spider Verse? Well, there's this book called Spider Verse. The Spider Verse, yeah, and it's it's uh, Slot, Dave, Dan uh, Slot, Dan Slot that wrote it, and it's fant- a fantastic story. I love it. But um, so I'd, I'd seen a lot of them in there too. So you read and that I, book? Is what you're I read, saying. yeah, I read it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I read that comic. Yeah, or uh, graphic novel. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not good. Let's not go okay, there. Sorry, sorry, I, <laughs> but um, um, I. So he, Peter Porker, was in that, I think. So I think I saw him there. But I really enjoyed, I actually really enjoyed one of the great things about Spider-Verse is the way they like portray each of the characters. And Peter Porker is animated differently from, you know, Penny, Penny and, and she's like anime kind of, you know, uh, animated versus he's like Looney Tunes animated. And so it's really neat. But anyway, I, I ranked him last too, so. Obviously, if we're talking about faithful adaptations of Peter Parker, Peter Porker is, he's obviously <laughs> not he's a, close. He's a pig version, right? It's like, it's a, <laughs> even in the original comics where Peter Porker was a thing, like it was meant to be like a, you know, kind of like a silly Looney Tunes spot inspired yeah. comedy series. So, well, I thought, you know, I think spider Ham was probably actually my least favorite part of Into the Spider-Verse. Mm. Like I just... I didn't find his stuff all that entertaining. No, no. <laughs> uh, and so like, he's Fair clearly the, he's, like, in, so if we're talking about the movie and like his performance, I think his performance, well, the, well, again, with the material he's given to do, it's great, but it's mm-hmm. my, still my least favorite part of that movie. And yeah. ergo is my least favorite portrayal of Peter Parker. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Peter Porker. You were good, but you weren't that good. <laughs> so coming into seventh place with 20 points. Ooh is Nicolas Cage as oh. Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man Noir, Noir, from 2018's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's 1933, and I'm a private eye. I like to drink egg creams, and I like to fight Nazis. A lot. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something, anything. Where I go, the wind always follows. <laughs> so I was familiar with the Spider-Man Noir character from the video game Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Because that's a game where you basically you play as four different Spider-Men through different levels. And Spider-Man Noir, if you ever read the original comic or play the game, it is very much like a, like a film noir f- movie. As if it's like this like 1930s kind wow. of gangster stuff. And like the yeah. Spider-Man Noir character has fewer powers, so he can't... He can't web sling. He has no web shooters. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. He doesn't. In the, yeah, so in the game, it's like a big stealth thing where you're basically going around trying to like knock out mobsters and whatnot. Ooh. So knowing that it was going to be Nicolas Cage playing him in the movie, <laughs> I was like, all right, he's he's going to be more zany. <laughs> that was a brilliant move, yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, like, yeah, I found his performance engaging for sure. Yeah, right. But, you know, you really forget that this guy is supposed to be a version of Peter Parker. He never even takes his mask off. Oh, right. 
Like you don't yeah. even really you, you see like once in his in his like introduction you see like a shot of him in like silhouette or something of oh yeah yeah that's right you don't even see his face yeah because so it's yeah. almost hard for you to forget that this is meant to be a version of Peter Parker because he yeah he, yeah he sounds so different and unfortunately like like Spider Ham and uh, Penny Parker he has not very much to do in Into the Spider Verse most of right. those again comic relief yeah. Although so, you do get a sense of the, like, kind of the, like, obviously he's noir, so he's like the dark version, right? But also you get a, there, there is a sort of seriousness that I kind of remember finding in the movie. Yeah, so for me, it was very easy to rank him near the bottom. Right. Because I would have loved to see, I mean, I guess the family-friendly movie isn't the right audience for a more <laughs> faithful Spider-Man noir yeah. movie. But yeah, it, that version of Peter Parker is interesting because, again, he goes through all the same conflicts that a normal Peter Parker would do, except it's the 1930s and it's the Great Depression. Right. So it just right. makes it all the more hard. Yeah. And he has to work harder because he doesn't have as many powers and he's not as powerful as classic Spider-Man. So yeah. I would have loved to see that explored in the movie, but obviously they didn't get a chance to do it. Maybe if the, even if they bring him back, I doubt that they'll actually go the more serious route. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> so those, for that reason, I think I'm comfortable having him being seventh place. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I'd place him seven too. So that's fine. <laughs> Coming into sixth place with 19 points, so not far off. Yeah. <laughs> is Nicholas Hammond as Peter Parker in the 1970s live-action Spider-Man. <laughs> Where are the others? They've gone downtown to plant a bomb. Downtown? The president's in town. He's going to make a speech at 3 o'clock, and they're going to plant the bomb on a building nearby. Did he say which building? No, but they did say it was a brand-new building. Okay, you call the police and tell them about the bomb. So people are probably aren't even familiar with this one, but in fact, there was a short-lived live-action Spider-Man television series in the U.S. starring Nicholas Hammond as Spider-Man. Who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it basically in Europe and over other parts of the world, they packaged a couple episodes together to uh, release it as a film, which apparently often happens with like happened back then with TV shows. They would package a bunch of episodes together and release it as a film to try and get other people interested in it. Yeah, I actually never really heard of that until I'd. I've, I've maybe seen it before, but I've never really heard of that. So, so I've I only really watched the show and a clip from the movie for the first time last night. I'd always heard of it and known that it was a thing because I spent time on Wikipedia looking up everything Spider Man related. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen photos of like what Spider Man looks like, <laughs> and like what he looks like as Peter Parker. He looks like he's supposed to be playing a college age Peter Parker, but I would say. Even for the 70s, he looked kind of old to be a college student. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do, did you see what he looked like? He had like this big head of hair. No. I, so I've I've seen, I think, clips and you were mentioning him flying or not flying. Yeah, it is kind of flying. It was though. like, yeah, jumping. Jumping. <laughs> it's like a single buildings in a single bound. Um, and he... Um, yeah, very much like, and he's got like the spider pose, like he's like kind of crouching. <laughs> so he seems that seems really. Uh, I, I so I've seen clips of that, but I haven't. I wasn't able to like look up. Doesn't he look kind of old to be a college? Oh, student? he does. <laughs> he reminds Christopher Reeves. That looks like kind of Christopher Reeves, eh? Doesn't he? Well, Christopher Reeve is a person. There's no Christopher yeah. Reeves. So oh, I Reeves. I, I don't Sorry. know. I don't ah. know who you're talking about. There's <laughs> George Reeves. George Reeves. And then there's Christopher Reeve. <laughs> Christopher Reeve. I meant yes. Yes. Okay. The, yeah, the I can Superman. see. I can see a resemblance to Christopher yeah. Reeve for sure. But he's definitely like an older, you know, Clark Kent, right? He's not a uh, college student, Clark Kent. No. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, you know, to, just to give Nicholas a kind of like a, a fair shake, I like tried watching some of the footage of him as Peter Parker in Spider-Man to like see, okay, like what is he like in the role? Uh, and unfortunately, like I think it's just a product of the time. So first of all, like I said, he, I, I have a hard time believing him as Peter Parker just because he, he looks too old. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and like it's not like Spider-Man has to look like a little kid, mm -hmm. but he has to look age appropriate. So if I'm supposed to believe he's a college student and I can't visually like see the actor as a college student, student without them maybe writing into the fact that he's supposed to be like a mature student which mm. yeah isn't normally the case with P uh, peter parker <laughs> then i'm immediately like kind of checked out i'm like yeah i don't know who this guy is yeah and then as far as spider-man goes i watched like a couple of fight scenes it's like he hardly ever says he doesn't really say anything while he's doing a fight scene so it's yeah. like very non spider-man-y <laughs> yeah that's then, right because that's the big thing about spider-man the quips 
and, and then the way he moves, I it, it's it's a product of the time. Like, there's no way they could have done a faithful version of Spider-Man with the limited technology of the 70s. Yeah. But it's as if he can barely see out of the mask. So he's like <laughs> constantly like putting his arms out in front of him to like as he's walking like, to make sure. Am that, I going to run into anything? anything? Watch yeah. out! Watch out! <laughs> to make sure he knows where he's going. And then I I watched one scene where you know he fights a guy, shoots him in a web, and then he starts talking to this woman. And he just he just sounds like the the guy in this like he doesn't sound any different than he does, oh, yeah. and he's just like <laughs> like not trying to be friendly or anything. He's like yeah. call the police. Like yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. In a way, he kind of just he kind of just reminded me of like the '60s cartoon in that sense, like the yeah. uh, Spider Man from that show who just oh, kind of yeah. like, talks very matter of factly. Right, a, that's a, true. A situation. So was that post? The cartoon? Yes, this would have so been like after, this would have been like a decade after that. Cartoon. Oh, okay. So all the people that had seen that, they were like, "Oh, that's what Spider-Man's supposed to be." And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, based, do you think it's fair that he's he's so far down or up this list? I mean, even I, part of me is like, maybe I should have put him lower for myself because <laughs> <laughs> he seems like he's like really out there. But um, no, nah, I'm I'm all right with where he is right now. So. <laughs> Sorry, Nicholas. Uh, well, you did a great job, though. I think you you made it on the list. So, hey, <laughs> not many people have. <laughs> you get a participation trophy. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so we ha- are in a situation where there's a tie. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah? Just one tie? Or is that it? Just the- Th- There's actually two ties. Oh, holy moly. So we're going to okay. have to, like, okay, so tied with 12 points each are... Both versions of Peter Parker from Spider Man into the Spider Verse. So, oh, Chris Pine and Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson. <gasps> oh man, it's interesting to see how it hashed out. So you ranked uh, the Chris Pine version of Spider Man fairly high. Yes. Whereas both myself and Nerd Ranker ranked him hot, higher, lower, lower. So L- lower, but le- so more points. But yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so explain yourself. Well, I mean, if you're trying to get an image of who Peter Parker is, and then I would say that's like the, one of the more faithful renderings of him because he is. But it's not. Hey, Kingpin. How's business? Boomin. <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, that's a no no. This might open a black hole under Brooklyn. It can't be worth the risk. It's not always about the money, Spider Man. Don't you want to know what I saw in there? Wait. I know what you're trying to do. And it won't work. They're gone. Now, granted, this uh, where he is in his career as Spider-Man is he's later on. He's older. He's been through high school. And so I, I and I think like and, and actually in the movie, they, they portray him as like this. Hey, buddy, like kind of like the the very personable very um very uh spider-man guy <laughs> right he's the spider-man's atyp- a verb now. the atypical spider-man right and i so i was like well, i think he would be really high up in the ranking if anything so see what what kept me from putting the chris pine spider-man higher on the list is that it seems like everything's going right for him. Like he seems yeah. like he's like he's perfect. Right. Like yes. He ha- he's got he's got everything nailed down. He's like he's, ah. he's got he's got a wife. He's got a Christmas album. So he's, <laughs> he's yeah, that's right. People know who he is. He's and missing love the him. old Parker Parker Luck. Right. Yeah. He the he old doesn't. Parker Luck he, is gone. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like part ah. of part of what makes Spider Man a great character is that he's always dealing with something like he's, yeah. he's got either financial problems yeah. or personal problems yeah. or, you know, or a girl problem like, <laughs> yeah. or he's struggling with school. Like it's, it, it sounds kind of sad. It's like, yeah, I want Peter Parker to be happy, obviously. Yeah. But what makes his character so virtuous is that he always seems to be able to find a way to move past whatever obstacles in front of him. Right. And rise right. above the challenges right. put in front of him. So for this Peter Parker, the blonde one, <laughs> it doesn't seem like he has Peter, Peter B. No, Peter B. Parker is the other Jake one. Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for Chris Pine, Peter Parker, I mean, obviously he makes the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. So we we can't hold that. We, mm-hmm. That we can certainly put that as points towards mm-hmm. him. But at the same time, it's like if it seems as though like that Spider Man, 
has got his act together and, yeah. and everything's just going well for him. So yeah. there's not as much of the virtue for me in right. the version of Superman. Right, that's true. He just seems like this Superman kind of character that's just like, there. he's never really had like too terrible of a struggle. And then also, this is why I put Jake Johnson above him mm-hmm. because that is a Spider-Man who has been, you know, Doing, ground into the ground <laughs> well it's like it, it's first of all it's a version of spider-man we've never seen before mm-hmm. on film and yeah. very rarely in the comics too where it's That's like true he's gone through a lot of stuff he's gone through the death of his aunt and he's got went through divorce and he he's dealing with yeah. with with issues of like feeling inadequate to become a parent and yeah and the fact that he's still going strong like he's still being spider-man after all of that. Yeah. Like well, he, although he, he's not like actually when you, when we meet him, he is actually kind of given up being Spider-Man, right? Isn't there, there's a sense he's kind of like, I'm, I'm right. No, I think he's still doing it. Cause he's oh, still okay. wearing the costume and whatnot. He's right. just, he's just really down on his luck. Like he, <laughs> right. he's got like the worst really case of down. Parker luck you could right. find. <laughs> right. And that's what I find inspiring. Like that's why I've, I put him higher because I'm like, if I had mm. to like rank those two dudes, those two different Spider-Men, it's like, the Jake Johnson, Peter B. Parker, yeah, actually represents more of like who Spider Man is, yeah, in terms of his ability to like stick with it and be persistent and, yep. and to overcome the challenges put in front of him. And yeah, he's more or less depressed at the start of the movie, yep. and it's yep. only through like encountering the Miles other Spider Man and, and Miles oh, yeah. that he's and able to, Miles. yeah, that he's kind of like had a renewed sense of of hope. Look, Miles, this hero thing, it gets. It gets really, really complicated, man. You lose things. And look, maybe if I could go back home and I could have another chance, I, 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 maybe I would do some things I didn't do, okay? You wanna talk about that? <laughs> Honestly, Miles, don't do it like I did. You gotta do it like you. When do I know I'm Spider-Man? You won't. It's a leap of faith. In the end, that's all it is, Miles. A leap of faith. So I put Jake Johnson higher because I felt like it was a unique take that spoke to the heart of who Peter Parker is. Mm. Whereas necessarily like the Chris Pine version didn't as much. Oh, okay. So I enjoyed actually Jake Johnson Spider-Man better than than the Chris Pine version for that reason because he was but I felt it actually diverged from who Spider-Man was and I was when I saw him I was like that doesn't he doesn't really ring to me as a Spider-Man so I, in my ranking here I was like I I, I want to who's who typifies Spider-Man the best and I was like he kind of doesn't as much because he's like he's kind of given up much more, right? You know what I mean? But he, he hasn't given up. No, he's he hasn't. Still going at but it. I, I, and he still has I all guess. the quips. And he's, still, <laughs> he's got a gut, and he still does it. That's, that's right, exactly. <laughs> and like that's he's true, yeah. And he's I, so like polished. It's like he knows exactly how to maneuver situations yeah. and thwip and pull, thwip and pull, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> anyway. Officially on the podcast, these guys are tied, but I think the Jake Johnson Spider Man is, okay. is, is closer to who Peter Parker is. Peter Parker is okay. Okay, like yeah. if they were to do, if they were to somehow make that a live action movie where like Jake Johnson's playing like that whatever forty something Spider Man, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, here's my ticket. Here's, here's my <laughs> money. In, Give I'm it in, to me. I'm now. in. Give it to me now. <laughs> so what does that do for our ranking here? I guess if there's two oh. tied there that means that the numbers are gonna be weird that's kind of funny that those are the two characters that are tied too like we aren't tied on the other ones right so no there is a there's gonna be a tie for first oh right so we're gonna have to like man we're gonna this is gonna be the bat jar is gonna be a mess after our fight here (laughs) yeah so so those guys both had 12 points and then coming in in what i guess is now second place because yep. there's a tie for first, oh, man. and this will pretty much <laughs> this will pretty much tell who's in first because yeah. <laughs> there's only three left. Um, in third place with 11 points, so not too far off from the two Spider Verse Peter Parkers, is Andrew Garfield as Spider Man from the Amazing Spider Man movies. I knew you'd come back. Yeah, thanks for stepping up for me. You're the bravest kid I've ever seen. I'm gonna take care of this trip. You go take care of your mom, okay? All right, get out of here. Go. Go. You'll fight me! You'll fight me now! Ah! 
On behalf of the fine people of New York City and real rhinos everywhere, I ask you to put your mechanized paws in the air. Never! I crash so I kill you! I destroy you! Do you want me to come down there so you can kill me? Yes! I'll be right there. I didn't. I think I watched those ones once each, and that was it. Like I didn't really. I, I always see them on Netflix, and I'm like, oh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> when the first one came out, I, I did play devil's advocate for the movie because okay. the director and those involved with the creation of the movie they said they wanted to try and obviously do something different from the original trilogy. Yeah, and right. they wanted to like bring the the concept of who Peter Parker is into the new millennium. So, right. So yeah. at the heart, it's like, yes, in the comics in the sixties, Peter Parker was a sweater vest wearing eyeglass yeah. wearing yeah. nerd. <laughs> and at the core of that, it's like his identity was not necessarily as a nerd, but he was an outcast. He was somebody yeah. who was not part of the cool group because of his interests and yeah. his personality. And so what they wanted to do is really take that core and say, all right, if Peter Parker's meant to be an outcast, let's, Let's re. Let's basically like show him as an outcast in the 21st century. So mm-hmm. nowadays, more or less, people who are gifted educationally, who are and who are smart, they're not looked down upon with the same disgust. Disgust, yes. yeah, <laughs> as people from the 60s. So to yeah, to, to cast Peter true. Parker as like a nerd, he'd have a huge peer group of friends, and they wouldn't care. Yeah. What what jocks or whatever had to say about yeah. them. So you really, if you want to embrace this idea of Peter Parker as an outsider, you have to do something different. So how they chose to interpret the outsider is kind of like this like really like awkward loner skateboarder type guy who yeah comes off as aloof and you know he 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 doesn't know how to talk to people and yeah and i was like all right from that with that explanation in mind i can see what they were trying to go for with peter parker as this outsider that's true that's true now i I think i'm i'd be too hard on him you know i guess uh amazing spider-man 2 really kind of rubbed me the wrong way but again like like, it's not talking about if you if you ignore the errors of that film it's like right his performance like i've heard people say like of all the actors who actually played spider-man andrew garfield's just the best actor altogether oh yeah, if you look at their yeah. bodies of work and yeah. other films they've been in, like Andrew That's Garfield true. is the one who has the most street cred. Yeah. As an actor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been like Martin Scorsese films and like yeah, yeah. And I don't think Tobey Maguire has, <laughs> so or Jake Johnson for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, the way I've always kind of talked about Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker said, I, I'm not a huge fan of his Peter Parker. I don't like. Mm. I don't. I didn't, yeah. I didn't. I never got bought into their. Their version of him as an outcast and like yeah. this guy who's like just angry at everybody and yeah, yeah. And has a grudge against his parents for not being around. Like I, yeah. uh, I enjoyed like how they kind of brought the science back yeah. into it because like, that is always yeah. part of who Peter Parker is that he's gifted in science. But where I give praise to Andrew Garfield is when he's playing Spider Man because mm. he, first of all, just with his build. He's kind of that's true. Lanky. He, he's lanky. Like, he yeah. he looks more like Spider Man. Yeah, I would say even in the first Amazing Spider Man, uh, Andrew Garfield looks too old to be a high school student. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, uh, it's the continues this trend of people being too old to play <laughs> yep. the character. So I would say he's great when he's Spider Man because he the Amazing Spider Man suit I didn't like it very much because it looked like a basketball and it was this <laughs> weird design had yellow eyes yeah. <laughs> yep. amazing spider-man 2 i love that suit so much that i actually got a toy of it and up until oh. later films it was my favorite spider-man costume from any movie oh that's awesome and i felt like he really captured like the the spirit of spider-man really well yep. like he he was very jokey and full of quips and you see there's a couple of moments in like the second amazing spider-man where he's like interacting with kids and you like get the sense that he, he really sees it like, yeah, like I was, you know, I'm that kid who was by himself doing science stuff. So I'm going to like, as a superhero come in and like affirm you and your yeah. interest of science. So I really felt like he got Spider-Man right. Like when he was in battle and in the suit and doing his thing, there is like the one scene in amazing Spider-Man where he's like interrogating the guy and webbing him to the wall. And he, just, Oh yeah. He comes off as like a, as a jerk. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, okay. you think so? Yeah. He's like spiteful almost. Oh like, yeah. Like the way he's like, that's webs true. him in the in the in the, the crotch and, and all this stuff. It's just like <laughs> you're just you're just mean. Spirited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And Shoot. like you can tell, like there's like a mean spirited tone to like a lot of his commentary in that film. Yeah, so, that's true. So yeah. for me, it's like of the main live action Spider Man, he has always been kind of ranked third for me. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. 
But if I look at your ranking, I think you might have actually put him even lower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was. It. I mean, it, it was. Yeah, like you like you say, it was a fine performance, and and I think they updated him well, as you were saying. They brought him into like the 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 modern era, you know, as as a nerd and um and but yeah, he doesn't strike me. But and you're right. I think actually, like his kind of movements as and like kind of build and physique as Spider Man, like in the suit in the costume, it makes sense. And he actually looks like Spider Man, but when you're um yeah as in the person and he's but he's he is yeah he's there's there's a bit more like meanness and there's i i yeah i don't know so although he seems to lighten up in the second one i remember him being like not as and just trying to like not as emo stem the tide of like all this bad stuff happening you know because but it, and then and then the second one just like overstuffed with all these like Again, villains. Like, anyway, we won't you, talk about that. <laughs> you gotta get cut through all that and just like think of, think of him and his performance. Like obviously, yeah, yeah. he's got got great chemistry with Emma Stone, and so right. that certainly helps. Yeah, uh, helps spell the, out that part. Right, and they do they do enough to like demonstrate that he is rising above obstacles. I, I've kind of my personal issue with the first Amazing Spider Man was that his whole vendetta. It, it felt like he was seeking revenge and not becoming yeah. a hero. Like, yeah, he he's all this time kind of spending. He's spending all his effort trying to find the guy with the tattoo. Right, right. And then yeah, he kind of just has moments like, okay, I guess I got to do this hero stuff instead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and but there, and the, at the same token, there is something kind of beautiful about the fact that he never really gets closure for Uncle Ben's death in this one. I in mean, the same way that, he does with other ones. It's, I mean, it's similar to Batman in that sense. Is that. Well, no, he does get closure in the that comics. It depends on what version. Right, right. But yeah, yeah you generally, that's right. That's usually how it goes with Batman is that you never find his never, parents. He never has closure, so that's what kind of drives him into a certain degree. But yeah. But yeah, so we'll give we'll give Andrew Garfield points for that. The fact that he's continued at least until the end of the second one, he continued being Spider-Man despite never getting that closure. And then, of yeah. course, he did have, I guess, that little reprieve when Gwen died he kind of quit yeah. for a while but he came back he came back I mean that's that happened to the, the Toby Maguire second one too right yeah. so yeah all right so obviously if you guys are following along and you've done the math and you you're thinking who else has played Spider-Man you've realized that we're it's down like, to the final two dun, dun, dun. however I do like they do both have five points by the official ranking but I think we have to like we got to put them first and second. We can't have them both be number one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So currently, <laughs> we better get all the breakables out of the way. Yeah, Here we go. Currently, <laughs> currently tied for first place are Tobey Maguire, who oh. played Spider-Man in yep. the original Sam Raimi trilogy from mm-hmm. 2002 to 2007, and Tom Holland, who has mm-hmm. played Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since 2016. Mm-hmm. Now I see on here <laughs> that you actually ranked Tom Holland as third third yeah whereas both myself and total nerd ranker put him as first oh so i brought it down brought him down Ooh. whereas both yeah. myself and total nerd ranker put Tobey Maguire second and i put him as first and you put him as first yeah did i put second again i put oh i you put, put chris pine chris pine yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> um yeah i right, so let's talk about toby first sure toby Maguire. Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. This is my gift, my curse. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. I, I, you know what? And I think maybe there's a nostalgia aspect to that's kind of creeping in for me. Maybe. Um, I think Tobey Maguire, he does great. Like his, his portrayal is great in the, the sense of fish out of water. Like he does have like kind of the Parker luck. He's, he's kind of, he's trying to grapple. He's trying to like juggle like personal life and school and like, this kind of relationship with Mary Jane that he's like, he, he's on and he's like, no, I can't, but I can, but I want to, but I can't. And, and then Spider-Man and he's, he's doing like all these things and, um, whatever a spider can, whatever, whatever a spider can. <laughs> 
and I think he typify he shows that very well and um and he's got the quips uh maybe not as strongly as like um Tom Holland I think or um or uh Andrew Garfield but I think he I, I maybe that's I why I think he's like the the best for me i feel like with tom holland well no we won't talk about me yeah that's that's okay, okay. We'll, so, we'll hold off yeah so all right so for me it's like toby mcguire was the spider-man of my youth like i grew up yeah. watching those spider-man movies exactly. yeah and there wasn't a single part of me that doubted that he was spider-man like just the way he talked and the mm-hmm. like like you say like he really the way that they portrayed peter parker was very faithful to the comics mm-hmm. yeah and you see that across the first and the second film that essentially he's in these situations where he has to choose. He has to make a choice between what's going to benefit Peter Parker, what's going to benefit the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And not only do you see him constantly choose the sake of the world over himself, but you see the consequences that you see what it does for his personal life. And you see the kind of like the, the weight of that, I suppose like you, you get a sense like this is the suffering he is going through as a result of his selflessness. Which is beautiful. Yeah. As as I've gotten older, I I kind of laugh at how yeah how, how he was twenty six when it's they did campy. the first. Spider-Man. Oh yeah, right, right. He's not he high school. You tell me he's supposed to be a high school student <laughs> now, and of course, as a kid, I didn't know yeah. what a high school student was supposed to look like. But you tell me, twenty six year old Peter Parker is a, a you know a seventeen year old. Like apparently in Spider Man three. It's only supposed to be – there's like two years between Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and then a year between Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. So now, Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man 3 is supposed to be like 21, 22 years old. <laughs> you tell me, Jackals, does he look like a 22-year-old? <laughs> he – well, okay. And isn't – well, yeah, he should be – so he's – like at the beginning of the first one, he's in high school, right? Just like just about to graduate. And doesn't he – yeah, doesn't – what, the first one takes place all in high school? No, then? he graduates in the movie and then goes off to college. Yeah, so he's in college at that point. And then in the second one, he's in college. So, yeah, so he's supposed to be playing. You're right. He doesn't He doesn't strike me. When I look at him, I'm like, oh, that's that 21-year-old. No, it isn't. <laughs> like, he looks like a, an older person. And then this is going to be my super nerdy nitpick. But now whenever, oh, yeah. I, whenever I see photos of him in, like, the Spider-Man suit, I'm like, he's too bulky. Yeah, he's too. Oh, he's not. He's not lanky enough. He's not nearly yeah. like spidery enough. Like, yeah. Granted, there's like I love the '90s Spider-Man animated series, and in that show, he's super bulky. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a thing I would discredit that show for as well. But like part of the charm of Spider-Man is that he is small. Yeah, that's true. And he's like this little kind it's of like kitty. And every time yeah. you see Tom McGuire, he's like standing with his chest puffed out. It's yeah. Like, you look even bigger. <laughs> You're like yeah, making suit. yourself look bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. And and my big criticism of but he's not like kind of mousy like he doesn't really like I don't get the sense when I read the comics or anything that he's like this kind of small mousy thing but he's like he's still kind of a little formidable but yeah he's supposed to be like five ten but then yeah like well built but more like a I guess like a martial artist versus a bodybuilder that's true that's true yeah 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 my criticism of the Tobey Maguire Spider Man's always came down to the fact that. He was always ripping his mask off. Yeah. The, the script That's was right. always relying on him to take his mask off. <laughs> or was that was was that Tobey Maguire says, my, my face, I must be seen on the screen all the time. <laughs> and then it was a matter of the fact that when he was being Spider-Man, I just didn't, like, I've seen people, like, point out, like, yeah, if you look at all the t- instances where that Spider-Man is in his Spider-Man costume in those three Spider-Man movies, there aren't many occasions that would actually, like, justify him making a quip or a joke. That's true, yeah. But yeah. I would counter that by saying that's what Spider-Man does. He hides his insecurity behind humor. Right, like he right. Puts it, he's always in these situations where he feels in over his head, and so he yeah. takes that insecurity and channels it into like, ha-ha, overconfidence. You think I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, you, dumb, you dummy? <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I think across all three films, he makes like maybe four or five quips yeah. as yeah, Spider-Man. That's true. There's not a lot of like... It just feels yeah. to me as if it's, it's as if when he's wearing the costume, it's just that Peter Parker just wearing the suit like it doesn't yeah. feel right like and then the few times he does make quips it's like it's you who's out gobby yeah <laughs> out of your mind yeah. it's like oh man <laughs> it's just his line deliveries sound where again that's not his fault that's the script yeah right but even right. the way he delivers it it, it, it does it falls flat i actually like toby mcguire more in the <laughs> spider-man video games i find the oh way, yeah oh cause, boy because the, the the way he voice acts and does the lines again maybe it's just better writing in those games but yeah Spider-Man is using quips and he is like he 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 does kind of sound like a different person almost. Right. Right. 
the, I don't blame him for the mask thing because unfortunately yeah. when you're wearing a suit like the Spider-Man costume where you're covered from head to toe as an actor, you know, there's only so much you can convey with your voice. Yeah. So they, they were always right. trying to find new ways to like have him right. take his mask off. Right. Yeah. So that Toby <laughs> <Lord> could emote. <laughs> and I think the MCU has worked around that in a great way, uh, which we'll talk about with Tom oh, Holland. Yeah. But people dislike Spider-Man 3. But they love Spider-Man 2. They yeah. love Spider-Man 2. Yeah. And again, if you're just talking about Tobey Maguire's performance and nothing else. And, right. And how he portrays the character. The the decision in Spider-Man 3 to make like the dark Peter Parker just some weird <laughs> dorky <laughs> emo guy. <laughs> emo guy. <laughs> like the 90s Spider-Man show I think did it best. Like when Spider when Peter Parker gets the symbiote, he basically just turns into a jerk. Like he yeah. becomes like a, like a more angry and less That's patient. True. And yeah. essentially it's like sapping away the virtues out of yeah. Peter Parker. That's what the symbiote right. seems to do there. In Spider-Man Three, it's like, okay, well, the, here's Peter Parker, who's this dork, and now he thinks now he, to be. the dark version of that is to be like what he thinks is cool. So he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna buy new clothes and do dance numbers. And he's and, like Green Day, like <laughs> yeah. I realize it's not entirely his fault, but certainly yeah. like that's a discredit to that storyline. Yeah, it's yeah, like, they could have done a better job with Spider-Man Three. <laughs> but and he's also like. And again, I don't know what I want from this because it's like I want Peter Parker to be sad and mopey and overcome yeah. struggles. But Peter Parker in those movies is very mopey. Like Tom McGuire has some ugly crying moments. Yeah, that's true. He does. He's ugly cry. But I mean, I guess, yeah, I know. You're poking lots of holes. <laughs> <laughs> You're but again, destroying like he, my dreams here. He, he, nails, he nails Peter Parker. No he does. Like he the does. way that they adapt yeah. like the Spider-Man yeah. No More story. And even like yeah. some of the conflicts they show up in Spider Man three and with the with the way they tell the origin in the classic way yeah. in the first film. Yeah. Like he nails Peter Parker. But and this is where we'll now start talking about Tom Holland. Yeah. What I've always told people is that Toby Maguire is the best Peter Parker. Oh, okay. And then Andrew Garfield was the better Spider Man. If I was oh. if I was comparing the two of those guys. Because yeah, there was yeah. a time period where those were the two, and it's like, well, Toby's better at Peter Parker and Andrew Garfield's better when he's in the suit. So if he could yeah. somehow like edit the footage so that all the Peter Parker scenes are Tobey Maguire and then all the Spider-Man yeah. scenes are Andrew Garfield, yeah. that would have been great. Um, but then we got Tom Holland in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. He had big shoes to fill, obviously. But even from the very first moment of him in that trailer yeah. for Civil War. The first moment of the yeah, Civil and War. And the eyes are animated. I yeah. was like... Brilliant. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Brilliant idea. Because <laughs> you see it across the films that basically it allows him to actually be Spider Man more. Yeah. Wearing the yeah. full mask. And because his eyes can change shape and emote yeah. essentially. Yeah. It there's still lots of moments where his mask comes off and I yep. I just whatever with that, but <laughs> at least now there's a way for him and it's a fun way to sh- pay homage to the comic books because that happens a lot. He's got animated eyes. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because of course, even for an artist, like how am I supposed to sh- show how he's yeah. reacting to this? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. With his mask on. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And then I was like going into Civil War being like, all right, this I've never heard of this Tom Holland kid before. Oh boy. He got big shoes to fill. And like from that very first scene of him in his like bedroom with Tony yeah. Stark, I was like, yeah, I was sold. Why are you doing this? I got to know what's your MO? What gets you out of that twin bed in the morning? Because. Because I've been me my whole life. And I've had these powers for six months. Mm-hmm. I read books. I build computers. And and yeah, I would love to play football. But I, I couldn't then, so I shouldn't now. Sure, because you're different. Exactly. But I can't tell anybody that, so I'm not. Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. Uh, yeah. On this version of the character, because it they've and to this day they still haven't explicitly like mentioned Uncle Ben or Spider Man's like real like origin story for the MCU. Yeah. Well, they did uh, uh, Homecoming. They did actually like there was a conversation between him and um, who's his friend, best Ned? friend there, Ed, Ned, 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 where he's like, yeah, and then that's where I got my powers from although i actually didn't he, he didn't mention ben he just but, mentions a spider bite yeah he's mentioned a spider bite but yeah yeah so okay. what i what You're i've right. been saying what i've been saying to people lately is that tom holland is the best mix of spider-man and peter parker mm. so if, if you're talking about portraying the dual role of both yeah. spider-man yeah. and peter parker yeah then tom holland is is your guy 
That's true. But you yeah. are you ranked him higher, so like, I did. What, you must there must be things you don't like about him. <laughs> um, Tom Holland. He's uh, he, right now. I think it is because I feel like he's the flavor of the week right now, and everybody loves him because the Marvel movies are very popular, and everybody. And I haven't actually seen Far From Home yet, Uh-oh. so so I, I so I, I may uh, like I'll, I'll need to go and and see that, and then maybe that'll change my mind about it. I really I've really loved his performance, and he's he's up there in the in the performance. But it was hard to rank all these because I've all of these performances I've really enjoyed. To one degree or another, and I think I I was like I've I've felt like, um, Tobey Maguire's uh, kind of um, uh, performance was actually like pretty solid for me. I felt like he did a good job, and so that's why I was like, you know what, like I've I've he's he's been tried and true like all these years, and as I look back at it, I'm like, yeah, like that was a good performance. So I I'm I'm uh, or but it's not the it's uh, who Spider Man was, right? It wasn't like his performance, right? Um, and yeah, so I I, I would I, that's why I was like, I think Tony Morgan goes higher than him, but maybe. I I feel like if I got more distance from Tom Holland and like there's there's like yeah we've been having like a movie every year with Tom Holland in it and it's like and I'm like okay like you know he's and he's doing a great job but I'm like I feel like I need to sort of like let it sort no, of man, settle a little bit start <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. gotta do it right away this is nerd culture they gotta figure it right away oh man like, <laughs> Civil War he has two scenes he has one scene it's, where he's yeah. Peter Parker and one where he's Spider Man right that's the true the scene Very where he's quick. Peter Parker illustrates his character and his motivations and high school student yep high school student gifted yep uh, academically good with technology ha- and has this strong set of core values that he lives by mm-hmm. yeah and then the airport scene illustrates how Spider-Man moves, how Spider-Man right. fights, how Spider-Man quips, how he yeah. talks. Yeah. And it was like, by the end of the movie, I was like, I'm, I'm sold. sold. <laughs> this is like the package deal. And then with Spider-Man Homecoming and then his appearances in Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War. And it's a shame you haven't seen Far From Home because I feel like that would have turned the tide for you. That would have turned the tide for me. Yeah. he's I, I, And like I say, his his performance has been fantastic. He I looks think, like so. a high school student, first yeah, of all. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. And, he's and, like 23 now, but he yeah. still looks like a high school student. Yeah. And I hope you he can... might have turned me off is I... Because he's British. Right, he's got that British accent. So I think I may have seen an interview from him before. Yeah, and he's I was British like, in real life, but not yeah, when he's playing Spider. I know exactly. No, but but then I was like, I saw an interview. Maybe that's what. Maybe that's why. Like, Andrew Garfield's like, British. That's true, but I didn't know he was British. Like I don't think I saw an interview with him. <laughs> British like like so I see this kid I've never seen him before in movies and then I, I'm like oh he's gonna be playing the new Spider-Man and I see him and then there's an interview with like Jimmy Kimmel or something and he's like hello <laughs> hello governor <laughs> that's not his accent but he's like and I'm like oh I don't know like it's, eh. so you're- but he has been doing a good job and I and you know what I think you're 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 getting closer to convincing me and well here's and the you're thing. right like his 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 high school portrayal, like his portrayal as as Peter Parker as a person, and then Spider Man, they've been they've been actually like good, and and I like what you say about Tobey Maguire being a good Spider Man. Uh, sorry, Peter Parker, and then Andrew Garfield being a good Spider Man. Yeah, so this is like the best of both worlds. But yeah. I've seen a lot of people, and including myself, things we don't like about the MCU Spider Man is how closely associated he is with Iron Man. Yes. How much of yes. his character motivation and even the fact like what his suit looks like was decided for him by Iron Man yeah. and the villains he fights are based around Iron Man. Yeah. So Far From Home does a lot of work without spoiling anything for you. Okay. It does a lot yeah. of work to move him away from being like Iron Man's teen sidekick. Okay. Because I listened to the episode where you were, you said um, there, there's one of the two questions was is is he gonna just become Iron Man? And you were like, please don't. And I was like, yes, like don't make him Iron Man. And I saw in the trailer like he has like a black suit at one point, and I'm like, oh no, like they're gonna make him Iron Man. <laughs> like don't do this. Wait, Iron Man never wears black. Why no, would- but but they're just changing him into like, and he's becoming like Iron Man in the sense of like being. I don't know. I guess I was. It was. I thought I was kind of agreeing with you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> No, so yeah, like the big criticism is that this version of Spider-Man is so attached to P- to uh, Iron Man, to Tony Stark's character, mm-hmm. and it really takes away a lot of the agency and the individuality of 
Peter Parker's character. Like you think about Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker or even Andrew Garfield or any of these other guys as Peter Parker. Yeah. They all exist in worlds where they don't have a Tony Stark like figure coming in and solving their problems for them. Yeah. Or or right. shepherding them along or like having them as a mentor. You literally just have you, you, you he's the only one like that. Yeah. And yeah. That was a huge detractor for me, even when in Homecoming, like his whole motivation seemingly to be being a hero was that he had to impress Mr. Stark because he wanted to get into the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. By the same token, it's cool to see a Peter Parker who is basically an everyman who's grown up in the MCU with all these characters existing as heroes and having their example to go off of because Mm – yeah. And every other version of Spider-Man, he's basically like independent as if he's the only superhero in the world. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So he doesn't have, you know, the Tom Holland way that the, the way he's been portrayed, I should say, it creates a unique opportunity for us to see like, what does the MCU look like uh, on the ground level? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does, how does a kid who's grown up in the world with all these superheroes, how do they observe all this? How do they see the, the world? How do they see the Avengers? So it's very yeah. interesting in that sense, and Far From Home, obviously, uh, we like, we can do Endgame spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. obviously for since, me. <laughs> since Tony Stark's gone. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th- you know, Peter has. He's become his. It's he's his Uncle Ben now. That's what basically is happening. Yeah, right? like I've seen people talk online. It's like, does Uncle Ben even exist? Yeah. in the MCU. Yeah, and if he doesn't, does it matter? Yeah, like does Iron Man just become Uncle Ben? And th- when you get into those conversations, like that's what makes it harder for me to like call Tom Holland like the definitive Spider-Man because right. there's elements of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man that are definitive. Yeah. And <laughs> unless they just rehash it and just and, and reorient that same st- right. that stuff into the the new one, yeah. Then the Tom Holland Spider-Man isn't definitive anymore. Yeah. Right. But I would oh. still say, for all the for all that for all that, I think Tom Holland takes the cake. Takes the cake. Yeah. It's true. He's currently by the Bachelor system. He's tied with uh, with Tobey Maguire. Okay, yeah. And the only <laughs> one who can really change that is if you change your ranking. So. <laughs> so what I what I can do though is I think I can move. Let me see my ranking again. I think I could move Jake Johnson. Oh no, wait a minute. Sorry, I said Chris Pine, and I'd move him down. And I think I'd yeah, I'd move Tom Holland up to second place at this point. And so then that would change it, and that would make him first place. <laughs> so so I'd switch them three and sec- three and two, because then that would change it, make Tom Holland first. And it would, it would also change the the ranking, <laughs> right, for the other guys. So all right, now that we've talked about every oh, single no. person, let's just go through the list one more time. Okay, sounds good. In eighth place with twenty four points, we have John Mulaney as Spider Ham. In seventh place, we have Nicolas Cage as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man Noir. <laughs> in sixth place, with 19 points, we have Nicholas Hammond as Peter Parker and Spider-Man from the 70s. In fifth place, with 13 points now, we have Chris Pine as Peter Parker and Spider-Man from Into the Spider-Verse. Fourth place, with 12 points, is Jake Johnson as Peter B. Parker from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. In third place, with 11 points is Andrew Garfield from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Now in second place with five points is Tobey Tobey Maguire (laughs) from the Spider-Man trilogy. You're welcome, Tobey. (laughs) And in first place with four points, very narrowly, is Tom (laughs) Holland Holland. (laughs) from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And look at that. The bad jar the bad the bad jar cave is in great shape. <laughs> we didn't destroy anything in here. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a fish fight. <laughs> so there you guys go. That is uh, our podcast official ranking of all of the movie spider men that have played Peter Parker or not have played Peter Parker. Well, I guess I guess Peter Parker and Spider Man. Yeah, but I guess yeah. they're still kind of Spider Men because they're whatever oh, they're, right. they're part of this group right. that have played Spider Man. Right, right, because yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know what you think. Do you disagree with us? Do you, would you put them in a different order? Yeah. You know, who's your favorite? You can send all your hate to me. Not hate. No, you can disagreements with me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Joe, what's your favorite uh, Spider-Man movie? Uh, first of all, the name is Average Joe. Average Joe. <laughs> AJ. <laughs> I worked very hard to get that average in my name. That's true. <laughs> exactly. He's been not being, not excelling, <laughs> not being bad, <laughs> just being mediocre. <laughs> so that's awesome. Good job. My favorite Spider-Man movie, probably if I'm talking about not just a movie with Spider-Man in it, 
oh. and actually like a Spider-Man movie. Yeah, yeah. Would probably be into the Spider-Verse, honestly. Oh, yeah. It is. It's great. I love it too, actually. Yeah. That's cool. And then do you have a casting? If you could sh- could cast Spider-Man, who would you be? Do you have any ideas? All right, this is a really random question. Yeah, are you asking if I were to cast someone else as Spider-Man? Yeah. I would just make sure that Tom Holland Tom keeps Tom Holland, until, exactly. Because <laughs> he's young enough that he could keep doing That's it for true. years. That's true. So yeah. by yeah. all means, okay. I'd keep casting him. Cool. That's awesome. This is the, just I was, I was just wondering. <laughs> so this is normally when we go into the bat jar and look at our mail, but obviously it's so far into the future that we don't have any mail. Oh. So... Maybe but, Rob Cakel will send something. <laughs> <laughs> that guy hasn't mailed us in forever. Ah, oh, he's so terrible. <laughs> but maybe, you know, maybe Cackles, um, maybe between, maybe, you know, this episode is going to be going out later than we're recording. Maybe in the in-between oh, time, right. Rob Cakel will send us something. And right, because, so, yeah, I haven't seen head nor hair, hair of him in a long time. <laughs> so, I mean, I know he got married around the same time you did. Yeah, so yeah. maybe same reasons exactly. you've given for not being able to do stuff. I guess that's okay. Like. <laughs> but there, there's always a possibility that, you know, between when we're recording this and when this episode goes out, Rob Cakel will have emailed the show. Maybe I've emailed them. Yeah. Holy so, moly. Oh, there you go. But if you want to... Prove me wrong, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. So, Cackles, why don't you remind everybody how they can get a hold of us? Well, if you want to contact the show with a question or if you have an idea for an episode, that'd be pretty fun to do. You can send it to us at the Batjar Podcast Studios and email to batjarpodcast at <laughs> gmail.com. Thwip, thwip. <laughs> or you can tweet us, tweet, 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 at. <laughs> The Bat Cookie Jar. The Bat <laughs> Cookie Jar. <laughs> we are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Music, Google Play Music, <laughs> Stitcher Radio, Spotify, SoundCloud, or wherever you get your podcasts. Share our posts on Facebook and make sure to like us on, your, on our page because we want not just us, but we want everyone, every single person and every spider and every spider person <laughs> to join us inside the bat jar. This has been a lovely time, Joe. Excuse me? <laughs> Average Joe. <laughs> you just gave that old speech about ah, how I've worked so ah. hard to be here. And AJ, you, thanks so much for having me. No problem, Cackles. Well, uh, you know, we'll do we'll 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 do the thing. You can go into the bat jar and pull out a topic Ooh. for next time. Okay. Okay, we get it here. <laughs> okay. All right, no looking. Yeah. Because no that's... Looking. I better not pull out the script. <laughs> and... Ooh, D&D. Oh, no. Dun- <laughs> Dungeons and Wagons. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you, know, you don't know anything about this, eh? Oh, I've, I've played through one, two uh, one-shot campaigns, but... Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, at least I'm giving myself... You've got lots of time. Yeah. <laughs> so for you guys, it'll be next week when we talk about this. But for me, it'll be probably like a month before, <laughs> which is good. It gives me lots of time to just prepare myself mentally for, for this experience. So. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Uh, have you good ever luck. played Dungeons & Dragons? Like you, like once. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what did you think Although of it? Listen to... Like I remember Pixel Patch talking about, and he actually recommended a few uh, podcasts. And yeah. So I was actually I listened to a bunch of them, and yeah, I didn't actually finish. <laughs> <laughs> there, I mean, it's interesting. It's kind of cool, like you know, and and I I, I kind of want to like try it a little bit more, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a time commitment too. So <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take some time. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, well, we have, so we got to thank Cackles for, you know, your na- you live up to your name. There's yes, been a lot you. of laughter this yeah, week. Yeah, this has been fun. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, is there any words of wisdom you want to pass on to the audience about nerd culture? Oh, remember just to keep it bat worthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know how to top that. So <laughs> um, come back to the Bad Shark Podcast next week when we talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Dun, dun. Okay, cool. And until that time, I'm Average Joe. I am Cackles. Catch you on the flip side. Bye.